This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now let's talk agricultural statistics with Kyle Bauer and Lance Honig with the National Agricultural Statistics Service. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer reporting from Anaheim, California, visiting with Lance Honig. He is uh, with National Agricultural Statistics Service. Um, that's a division of USDA. Why does USDA have a NAS office? Well, NASA is the statistical arm of USDA, so we're responsible for all of the, the statistical work that's done at USDA, specifically on the domestic side of things, so we're estimating all of the crops, livestock, economic information for producers across the country, uh, you know, providing that unbiased uh, information on an ongoing regular basis so that folks can make informed decisions both within USDA and outside of USDA, our congressional representation, everyone. All these decisions that get made, we need to make sure that they're basing it on good, solid information, and that's what we provide. And how long has uh, NAS been uh, involved with from the federal government standpoint? NASA has been around for more than 100 years under, you know, some, we've had some name changes along the way, but essentially um, our mission has stayed the same throughout that time frame, providing that timely, unbiased information. Certainly, um, I don't think a lot of people realize all the implications of that, and, and we have to do our part in gathering that information. In other words, when you contact us, we, it's really important that we give you that information because it has implications all through the economy. Well, it does, and if you think about what's going on right now, there's a lot of work being done on the next farm bill. Um, and obviously, you know, to make good decisions about putting good policies in place, we need to have accurate information about what's going on on the farms today. And that's where NAS gets its information, as you mentioned, from the farmers. Uh, we're largely a survey-based organization, which means we're reaching out to farmers, uh, constantly gathering the information, because who's going to know better? Uh, what's going on on the farm than the farmer themselves. So that's who we talk to. That's where we gather our information. And, you know, the vast majority of the survey work we do is voluntary. Uh, so we are relying on farmers to, you know, take the time out of their busy schedules and provide that information to us so that we can provide useful data back to them. So how do you work in tandem with uh, state statistical services? Well, we really, as I mentioned, you know, we're the, the federal statistical arm. We have uh, close working relationships with the various state departments of agriculture. We do most of the statistical work for them as well or on their behalf. Um, maybe not everything, but certainly work closely with them because we want to make sure uh, that we don't duplicate efforts. So we work closely with them as well as other federal agencies, other units within USDA to make sure that we're as efficient as we can be, not only for ourselves, but with the producer's time as well. And time is an issue on that. Um, and so uh, normally to catch the producers, you may call in the evenings even. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, if we're going to make contact with producers, we've got to try to find them when it's convenient for them. Um, and sometimes the best time is a, a night uh, in the evening. It might be on a weekend. Um, so we're going to try to tailor our work around what works best for them. Now we have a, a uh, census coming up. You're involved with that as well? Yeah, NAS conducts the five-year census of agriculture as well. We're right in the middle of it right now. All those forms were mailed out back in December. We're about halfway through data collection at this point. We mail out, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of three million census forms. Uh, we know there's, you know, a lot of information to gather there. It's a fairly long form. It is required by law. Uh, so we do ask that producers get those forms back into us, and we've got about half of those back in already at this point, and we'll be continuing uh, that effort over the next couple of months as well. Visiting with Lance Honig, he's with National Agricultural Statistics Service. This is Kyle Bauer reporting from Anaheim, California. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Come back after these messages for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Welcome to Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center. Right here in Oakley, Kansas on I-70 at exit 76. I-70 after all is America's Main Street and we're right here on Main Street for you. Now that I'm an Oakley resident, I still come in almost every day. And I sit and listen to the conversations of the people around me 
You know, the guys who are talking about the big elf they just bagged or the folks who are taking their kid to college for the first time. People just traveling up and down the highway. Real people, just like you and me. And they find just what I find here, real people to serve them. There's history, there's scenery. We hope you'll stop and see us soon. Welcome to Oakley.